Let's go to Senator Daines. Th thank you, Madam Chair, Ranking Member Cantwell. Uh, I know it's a long flight from Alaska to Washington, D.C. Thank you for making that journey. I must tell you, as a Montanan, um, somebody who respects uh, the voice of the states and the voice of the people that live in those states, I am struck, deeply struck, by the fact that we've had both U.S. senators from the state of Alaska, their lone congressman, the governor, the lieutenant governor, 90% of the Alaska legislature, and 70% of Alaskans, when polled on this issue, support moving forward, as we are proposing to do, with drilling in the 1002. And I just think it's, 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 um, it's a bit arrogant for Washington, D.C., folks who are a long ways away from Alaska, to be in some way dictating the future of what Alaskans want to do and being contrary, some here in this body, and uh, your voice should count in this city. And uh, to this senator, it does. Thank you for making the journey. Um, in my home state, like Alaskans and those from Colorado, we have a blend of protecting the environment as well as responsibly developing our natural resources. This is a senator who spent 70 miles in August backpacking in the wilderness with my wife over two, two weekends. Credit to my wife for carrying all that weight too. Um, she's tough. But uh, I cherish those kind of outdoor experiences. I cherish the ability to fly fish, to hunt, to backpack, to climb mountains. Uh, this is in no way an either or kind of proposition. This is truly uh, a both and situation. Uh, I saw that same blend, that passion for the outdoors, for the incredible landscapes in Alaska, when I had the opportunity to see the North Slope in May, in fact, with, uh, with the chairman of this committee. And I, I'm just struck, uh, Alaska is an amazing place, truly beautiful. And, um, but I know the frustration of Alaskans that say, we want to be able to define our future and not have Washington, D.C. do it for us. Uh, Mr. Sheehan, as I stated earlier, protecting the environment is a value that both Montanans and Alaskans share. As an outdoorsman, I'm particularly interested in caribou. I've never hunted caribou, but uh, it'd be on my bucket list. As the agency that manages our wildlife, the agency that manages our wildlife, Mr. Sheehan, do you believe that production in the 1002 area can have minimal impact on the local caribou herds. Uh, thank you, Senator Daines. I, you know, I guess I'd harken back to uh, my time was brought up by the good senator from Nevada about uh, serving as a state director in Utah, where we too uh, uh, there built uh, great populations of, of large ungulates, uh, deer, elk, moose, uh, and conversely, uh, had energy development within many of those same areas. You've seen that both in Colorado uh, and in Montana, as has been pointed out. Uh, th these efforts to go into these fragile landscapes uh, uh, can be done. They can be done successfully. Uh, yes, do, do, uh, do our uh, employees have concerns about doing this uh, in a very careful manner? Uh, certainly they do, but we have wildlife challenges throughout America that we, we're challenged with every day. Not only the federal U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, who, who I'm honored to serve among the great employees there, but all of the states. And as we look at all of the, the challenges that exist in America, whether that's uh, oil and gas development, wind energy, uh, solar, and, and all the other opportunities that are there for, for uh, developing energy, all of those have impacts on wildlife resources and fishery resources. Uh, but I'll say this, uh, if this Congress directs us that way, we use the best science, the best technologies, uh, and, and, the, and, and other strategies such as uh, timing that we've heard uh, much about today and reduced footprint uh, to make sure that that has the least amount of impact on the native uh, wildlife species. Though. I want to talk to Lieutenant Governor Mallet. Um, 
we have a vibrant outdoor economy like Alaska does. Uh, we have millions of acres of public lands of wilderness. Alaska has, I understand, over 56 million acres of wilderness, about 15% of the total acres, and hundreds of millions of additional acres of federal lands, totaling around 60%. Some is suitable for hiking, some for snowmobiling, some should be left as wilderness. But some is suitable for timber production, others for mining, oil, or gas exploration. Do you believe that we are taking a balanced approach by opening up Section 1002 to production, allowing Alaska and all Americans to benefit from the revenue and security generated from this land? Thank you, Senator. I will just <clears throat> emphasize once again that I was uh, with the Alaska Federation of Natives when ANILCA was being developed. I was with uh, the Native community as a leader in the development of ANCSA, which is the precedent act to ANILCA. The, the effort at balance was among the most important considerations in the development of the Alaska National Interest Lands Conservation Act, ANILCA, which ultimately gained the approval of such giants of conservation as Congressman Mo Udall, uh, uh, the Secretary of Interior at the time from Idaho, the uh, uh, range of conservation interests and, and other interests across our nation and within Alaska. Uh, it was a grand bargain that was dealing with immense millions of acres, 160 million acres of land in our state went into the, the federal classifications in our state. Uh, within those classifications, there were there there was. I, I know balance. I'm well over the time. I'll, I'll insert myself here. So right. just do uh, you think we're taking a balanced yeah. approach? Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thank you. You mean when I'm responding, I'm using your time? <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. Sorry. I, I, it was probably better that I interrupt you than the uh, the chairman from your state. So yeah, I. Uh, you. I appreciate that.